Hello everyone. Welcome. We're just going to take a few minutes to talk about hope. And the emphasis today in talking about hope is going to be on prayer. We all pray, but how about we get a little extra information, okay? Let's begin. Welcome to my home. And we're going to talk about different things for confirmation, encouragement, enlightenment, and enjoyment. So come along, a theological journey of enlightenment, growth, and enjoyment. Let's have fun. Hi, everyone. Our first topic for today will be hope in prayer. I feel that prayer is important because hope is a part of prayer. Please note that faith is what connects prayer and hope. We pray with expectation or hope in faith, which is trusting the Lord to answer without doubting. Sometimes the answer is kissed instantly, and sometimes the answer is delayed. And even at other times, it doesn't come the way we expect it to come. You know, you, you may have thought somebody was coming on a white horse and answering your prayer, but it doesn't. Maybe a little donkey, might be a little puppy, but it's coming, okay? But don't give up because the Lord's time is not the same as our time. So let's define hope in prayer. The dictionary defines hope as a desire accompanied by expectation of or a belief in fulfillment. Someone or something on which hope is centered. The Bible says in Hebrews 10, Verse 23, New King James Version says, Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. Isn't that something? He's faithful. Now, let's define prayer. Prayer is a petition in word or thought, because you don't always have to pray out loud now. Sometimes it's just between you and the Lord, not you and the enemy. It's an earnest request. Now, in my book, I define prayer this way. It's a religious act by which we address or petition God to worship him and implore him. Okay. I said earlier that sometimes the answer is delayed, as in Daniel chapter 10. The vision of the glory of God. Daniel was praying and fasting for three whole weeks. Ooh, can you do that? Three whole weeks without eating? He didn't even anoint himself. Daniel had a vision in which he saw a man. Now, note that there was no name given for this man in the story. However, there was a description of him. Let's take a look at Daniel, verse 12. New King James Version, to be more specific. Then he said to me, Do not fear, Daniel, for from the first day that you set your heart to understand and to humble yourself before your God, your words were heard, and I have come because of your words. Oh man, isn't that something? Sometimes we wonder when we pray, is he really listening to me? I hope so. So now we know from Daniel 12 that he hears us the first time we utter a word. So what can we glean from this passage of scripture? First, God does hear our prayers. Second, Our prayers are not always denied, but sometimes delayed, and for good reasons, because he knows best. We can trust God even when we don't understand what he's doing. That's faith. That's hope. Now, let's take a look at another story. And this time, it's going to be about him. In 1 Samuel chapter 1, verses 9 through 10, 
And then 17 and verse 20 and 28 is what I'm going to focus on. But as opposed to reading all of that, I'm just going to simply tell the story. Is that all right with you? I hope so. I'm going to, I'm going to tell you and do you good, okay? The story of Hannah, the mother of Samuel. In telling the story of Hannah, who was a praying woman, my focus would be on the scripture and the verses that I just mentioned. Why not read the story for yourself a little later when you got some time, a little downtime? First of all, Hannah was childless, and Hannah means gracious. After eating and drinking, Hannah went to the tabernacle of the Lord to pray as she had always done so many times before. She prayed relentlessly, determined in her soul, crying out in extreme pain to the Lord. During her prayer, Hannah made a solemn promise, a vow, speaking to the Lord that if he would look on her suffering, which was unbearable, and give her a male child, she would give him to the Lord all of the days of his life. She also said in her prayer that his hair would never be cut. In other words, she's going to raise him as a Nazarite, okay, following the Nazarite law. Eli the priest was watching her and then accused her of being drunk with wine. She responded saying that she was not drunk or intoxicated, but poured out her soul before the Lord and was not a wicked woman. Hannah also explained that out of the abundance of her complaint and grief, she had spoken until now. Eli then told her to go in peace, and the God of Israel grant her petition, which she had asked. Hmm, that's something to think about. Hannah conceived and birthed a son, then named him Samuel, and said, Because I have asked for him, the Lord, given to me. When Samuel was weaned, Hannah kept her promise. She kept her vow. She lent him to the Lord for as long as he lived. Now, what can we glean from this story? In other words, what can we take away? First, we should pray to the Lord as Hannah did. First Chronicles twenty two nineteen, New King James says, Now set your heart and your soul to seek the Lord your God. Second, we should lament with our whole heart and soul as Hannah did unashamedly. Hebrews four sixteen, New King James says, Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. We don't have to, we don't have to crawl. We don't have to tiptoe. We can walk up in there boldly because we're serious. To some, her petition was a strong desire. But during those days, to be a woman without a child was considered a disgrace and a curse. Isn't that something? It is important for us to cry out in prayer as if in grief. And at times, we also need to fast. The fourth thing is, we should pray with faith and hope. The fifth, when we make a vow or a solemn promise, we must keep it. And if you want to study a little bit more about making a vow, you'll find that in Numbers chapter 30, verses 1 through 16. Ecclesiastes 5, verses 4 and 5, New King James says, When you make a vow to God, do not delay to pay it, for he has no pleasure in fools. Pay what you have. And that means what you have vowed. Hmm. It's better not to make a vow. 
than to make a vow and not keep it or pay it. When we pray, we don't have to rush. It's okay to pray silently. God hears our prayers. Remember, Daniel? Psalms 37, 4 says, Delight yourself also in the Lord, and he shall give you the desire of your heart. Isn't that something? All we have to do is delight in him. Enjoy him. Remember, God will respond to us directly, and sometimes he speaks through others. If you a song on the radio, but be someone speaking on the television. But he always speaks to us. So pray with a pure heart as Hannah did and watch God move on your behalf. I close with the words of a hymn by R. Palmer and L. Mason entitled, My Hope, My Faith Looks Up to Thee. Verse 1 says, My faith looks up to thee, thy Lamb of Calvary, Savior divine. Now hear me while I pray. Take all my guilt away. Oh, let me from this day be holy. If you don't mind, I'd like to pray with you. Is that all right? Eternal Father in heaven, we come before you today trusting in your word. Your word says that if we trust in you and we obey you, then we will be blessed. When we delight in you, you will give us our heart's desire. So, Lord, today we come before you humbly, just as him did, thanking you for another day, for the basics, life, health, strength, and to bless our family and our friends as well. We thank you, Lord, for it is in the mighty name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior, we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. So I say, may the grace and peace be your portion today, every day. Take care until next time. Live, learn, and enjoy the journey. This has been a cup of tea and a word with Orsi. Thank you.